Here in the great state of Alabama, there's no place like the shore. And today we're taking a trip down to Orange Beach, Alabama. That's the legend Jamie Dubos. You're watching South Alabama Sports right here, right now. And we are back here on South Alabama Sports with the legendary coach, Jamie Dubos. And, Coach, for those of them that don't know you, tell the audience a little bit about yourself. Well, I, you know, I appreciate the introduction. Uh, I've just uh, – football's been really good to me. I've been in the state now. I, I left with 27 years in, went over to Georgia for a couple of years. Uh, you know, I was a head coach at uh, – I actually first started a head coaching career at Susan Moore High School. Uh, up in North Alabama for a couple of years and then went with Bill Clark at Prattville's offensive coordinator. And, you know, it, my career kind of took off after that, became a head coach at Prattville, uh, you know, won a couple of state championships as a head coach there, played for three out of four years, uh, got the opportunity to go to Florence for a couple of two great years there in Florence up in North Alabama, uh, successful run there, had a lot of good guys there and, you know, just uh, wanted to get back to South Alabama. One, I went to Florence for two years, met some of the most wonderful people ever, but uh, cold weather was not for me. Uh, <laughs> I, I, it snowed like a month there when I went there, and I was like, we got to go. So uh, we, we went back south and had the opportunity to go to Phoenix City. And, you know, Phoenix City was always a great place athletically. I thought when I was at Prattville, they had tremendous athletes, and uh, I thought our system really fit well there and went well there. And you know, just uh, had a good run. And, uh, you know, uh, many, many years in the semifinals. Heck, I thought we were the old Cleveland Browns for a little while there because uh, we got knocked out by McGill like three years in a row before we finally beat them to get to the championship game. And, you know, then we were able to win it uh, against Thompson in 18 and in 19, Thompson got us. And I retired, went over to Valdosta, Georgia at Lowndes High School. And, you know, had a good year there, went to the semifinals the first year. And the second year, we got knocked out in the quarters. And, by Collins Hill, which uh, had a tremendous football team last year and uh, up in uh, Georgia in the Marietta area. But uh, the opportunity arose to come to Orange Beach. And, you know, my wife wanted to come back to Alabama. And I, I missed Alabama football. I missed Alabama high school football. It was good to me. And, you know, I, I seized the opportunity, man. It just uh, – uh, I talked with everyone down here and everybody I talked to had great vision and – you know, we're, we're in the process of building everything right now from indoor facilities to, to a new football field, a stadium. And, uh, you know, so the newness of that and the opportunity to put your fingerprint on something, you know, and say that, you know, five, 10, whatever years I've got remaining in my career. And, you know, I hope it's 10 to 15, but, uh, you know, whatever's left. Uh, to say that I had a fingerprint in developing everything that's going on here right now was huge to me. Uh, Coach Smith did an outstanding job laying the groundwork for two years that the program was going. And, you know, it's been a successful program. That's what a lot of people don't know. Uh, this program's got a winning record through two years. Uh, and, and that's something that I'm very pleased to say that we got an opportunity right now. We have 72 football players out, 9 through 12. Uh, wow. we're, we're excited where our numbers are and, you know, the pieces of the puzzle are all coming together and we've got some really young talent that's uh, extremely exciting about the future. Our ninth, and, our ninth grade class and our 10th grade class are just, you know, we've got 30, probably 25 plus kids in each one of those classes. So, you know, our numbers are really coming up and uh, the excitement's starting to generate. But, hey, football's new down here in Orange Beach. I'll be honest with you. I'm I, I, everywhere I've been, we've been like the show. And uh, now we're trying to produce the show. We're trying to get everybody yeah. going into the show. So uh, it's going to be an exciting year, and I'm excited to be here. And, Coach, you touched on it a little bit. You know, obviously Coach Smith 
he built the program and he had a outstanding building block for it. And you're inheriting an interesting program, interesting place. You're down at the beach. And a lot of people think, oh, well, you know, the beach is just, they don't have really good athletes, don't have the talent. Well, I've seen some of your talent um, clips of seven on seven. Obviously, uh, you have an outstanding athlete in, athlete in Chris Pearson. Mm-hmm. But you're making an interesting jump. You know, Orange Beach is going from 2A to 4A. And you're in a tough region along with Jackson, T.R. Miller, St. Michael's, Bayside, uh, Satsuma, all of them. So what have you learned about your team since you've been there? And what has the culture been like to trying to change it to what you wanted to be? Well, culture, we're developing. I, I got to be honest with you. There, there's not a whole lot of culture. Uh, we are starting youth football for the first time ever down here. I've got, we've got a 10U team and a 12U team right now. Uh, I get, I get started early, man. We got to get them started young, and we got to get yeah. the excitement going. So, I'm pleased to say that both of those teams have made for the first time ever. Uh, we've got coaches ready to go with that, and uh, we're excited. Our middle school program. Uh, right now has uh, 58 working out, 7th and 8th grade. Uh, so we're excited about that group of young guys coming through. And then, you know, with our varsity program, you know, I've never, you know, I told somebody earlier, you know, the worst regular season, I've been really fortunate that I've ever had is 7-3. and three. And I don't expect that to change, man. We, we've got a tough schedule, but I've had a tough schedule wherever I've been. You know, it's a little different dynamics, but uh, – Man, if you've had the opportunity to be at our practices in June, we just we're kind of putting what I like to do on it. It's a little different because, of course, we don't have 150 guys running around. What I'm used to, you know. Right now, uh, we're at a little bit different uh, scenario where it's 70 kids, 72 kids out there, and you know we're having to change the philosophy of practice a little bit, but we're still trying to tempo it. We're still trying to go fast, and we're, we're hoping some of those things. Uh, are going to help us in the 4A game. Uh, we're 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 got an offense and a defensive unit. That's something that you know is kind of new. We're not asking our kids to play both ways. You know, we want our kids to be fresh in the fourth quarter, and we've got uh, we've got good enough talent that we've been able to do that so far. As you said, we've went to a couple of seven on sevens. Uh, we're going to Hoover this next week coming up. It's going to be a big challenge for us. We've got some teams from out of state and some really good teams from the Birmingham area that's going to be in there. And, you know, that's the great thing about it. You know, I, I'm putting our guys up against the, the, the Thompsons, the Hoovers, the Ocean Springs, Mississippi, the, you know, whoever we can run into right now, because I want our guys to understand it's about competition and they're able to compete. You know, when we, when it's seven on seven, they're only allowed to put seven guys out there, man. Yeah. They may have 190, but they only can put seven out there, you know, and, that's what I try to tell the guys, you know, our 11's just got to be the same as their 11. And uh, we've got some good, talented kids. And, you know, we got good, young talent, our offensive line. You know, the great thing about it, too, you talk about Coach Smith and the success they had. You know, we didn't really graduate anything last year. Everybody's coming back. Uh, that's what a lot of people don't understand. You know, they, they I think, had a 9-2 and two overall record last year. Got beat by a Holland home team up at, uh, in the first round. But, you know, I, I think you know, we've got a lot of people coming back. We've got a lot of these kids have played together now for multiple years, two years plus. So they've got some continuity together. And I've been able to get a lot of kids out. You know, uh, John Holiday moved over from St. Paul's, uh, the quarterback who's joined us also to give us some depth at that position. He plays wide receiver also, and he's been exceptional over the summer for us. So uh, we've just got a lot of lot of good, talented guys that are stepping in and doing a lot of different roles for us. But, you know, culture is something we're developing. You mentioned that. I mean, I'm not going to lie. You know, it's uh, football is something down here. Of course, y'all know there's a lot of things to do other than football. Yeah. So, uh, you know, getting that un- the, the importance of showing up during the summer. You know, these guys have been, you know, that was the first thing I was told is, you know, coach here at the beach and they got all these things to do and they're not going to come to workouts. You know, we, kids are showing up. They're, they're here every day, you know, and uh, they're working. And, that, you know, that's one of the reasons I took this job. If you if you really get to know me, I like challenges. Uh, when I, when things get to, you know, people always ask, why did you leave Central or why did you leave Prattville? You know, we were winning at the times and things were going really well, but I get kind of bored sometimes and I want to go start yeah. something new. And uh, that's why I think I'm standing here right now. I'm excited about where we're at right now. Uh, I'm excited to be able to sneak up on people because you're Orange Beach and they're, uh, you're going to 4A and, you know, you're not thinking much about them. 
uh, I, I, I'm going to tell you something. I've been really shocked by some of the talent we have and what we got right now running around. And uh, the guys are really coachable. Man, I'll tell you that. They work extremely hard, uh, you know, and they're very coachable. And uh, like I said, Coach Smith did a great job, you know, getting the, getting the foundation. You know, he laid the first bricks in this program. And, you know, we're trying to put the bricks in place now to fit around and, and, and to build where we're going. And, you know, we've got a lot of support from our administration. We have a new superintendent here. We've got a new principal. Our principal's coming from Clay Chalkful. They know how to win in Clay Chalkful. Uh, the superintendent, yeah, no doubt. The, the superintendent that's with us is uh, uh, the same superintendent that was with me in Phoenix City. So, uh, you know, things are kind of falling into place. And, you know, athletics are, are big here in this community and in this school. And uh, people want to do well. You know, academics, of course, are going to be great. But ac- athletics are going to be better than a lot of people think. And, you know, we've, we've got some really talented kids that have kind of moved into the area also. Uh, with us becoming a city school system, uh, we've had a lot of people that want to move in. And I'm not talking about, you know, from Baldwin County area or anything. I'm talking about from Birmingham. We've had, uh, I probably had five or six people move in from Birmingham that had houses down here that said, hey, you got a school system now. We would love to just live there year round. So, you know, yeah. that, that's benefited me. We've got a couple of kids that moved in from Spain Park. And, you know, we've had some kids move in from Greenville. Uh, so, you know, we've had kids move in from other places uh, to help us. And uh, that, that's been a big plot positive. And, you know, our kids have, uh, you know, invited them in and, and welcomed them in. And, you know, they're working hard. And, and, you know, again, we got some kids out, too, that wasn't playing that I think uh, should have been playing that are now that are really helping us. And, Coach, before I turn it over to Michael here, so you mean you uh, talked about this kids coming to workouts, things that people really talk down about. Oh, he's not going to come. But uh, Coach Wendell, and he can't be on with us tonight. Uh, he had some family issues and prayers go out to him. But he wants to know what is the quality of uh, what is the quality of leadership on your team that you have this year? Man, it's been really good. Uh, we've got, like I said, we've got 17 seniors right now, and I think that's a good number for us right now. But we got 17 seniors. And uh, I think our senior class has been tremendous leaders. I'm going to tell you, Chris Pearson, you know, uh, he's an exceptional athlete. I told somebody the other day, you know, I've had some really good ones at Phoenix City and Prattville. I've had a lot of good ones signed. I've had some four stars, five stars. Chris Pearson can play in the SEC. Uh, he's as good as any of those guys we've had. I've, I, You know, I've seen him, and, and I'm going to tell you something. I thought, you know, he might not be a great practice player, but he's one of our better guys at practice. Uh, Chris does an outstanding job of practicing hard. Uh, he does everything we ask him to do. And uh, when we get on the field, he's been everything as advertised coming in to me. You know, he's been a playmaker. And uh, he's done an outstanding job. You know, Cash Turner at quarterbacks done a great job for us. You know, a lot of people, you know, come in and said he was a runner and, you know, maybe couldn't throw the ball well. Well, uh, I think he's done really well. You know, we went to a couple of seven on sevens and he's competed and done gr- well. And I, like I said, John Holiday is another guy, you know, Chandler uh, Smith. Uh, I mean, Chandler Wilson, that was another school. Chandler Wilson uh, plays DM for us and tight end. Uh, another great kid that's doing an outstanding job. And we've got tremendous young talent too coming in. So I'm missing some, but we've got, we've got guys that are really stepping up and leading and doing an outstanding job. Uh, that I'm, I've just been very pleased about. And, you know, they, they, they're not just vocal leaders. They're leading by example. You know, they're, they're pulling the extra. They're doing what they're supposed to do. And uh, I think that's making those young guys really fall into place and lead well, too. Come live and come play where the state vacations, Orange Beach is such a great destination here in this great state. And you've already alluded to it. You have uh, parents and families from up north already moving down there because they've had they have summer homes and vacation homes and they decided to stay there all year round. But just talk about the message that you're trying to implement at Orange Beach to let not only that area in Baldwin County, but let the whole state know that hey, we're up to something special down here in Orange Beach. Well I, I can tell you wherever I've been we've won and we're gonna win again. Uh you know this this is uh this is going to be a great football program it's going to be a great athletic place and a great school it's a tremendous place to live you've already mentioned it and and we developed the total athlete you know i'm about the person i'll go ahead and tell you that first and foremost anybody that knows me been around me anything else you know we're going to develop the the person to be a better man 
Uh, we're going to develop the person to be a better citizen. We're going to make this a better place through this football program. And, you know, it, it's a delight to play here, man. We make it fun. It's all about being fun. Listen, I, I have more fun than the kids do when we play. If you, <laughs> anybody that's been around me know, uh, you know, you, you see me on the sideline and I'm probably, I look like the Grinch or something running around down there. But, uh, you know, our practices are upbeat, fun music play and the only thing is i tell our kids always no matter where i've been you know we can listen to rap we can listen to what we're gonna have an 80s day you know that's my day you know that's yeah. it. i get to sing and i get to move around and we have a really good time but uh yeah you know our practice is uh we're, we're gonna we're gonna really train in football we've got a great training facility that's gonna be built here uh we got a sixty-two thousand square foot indoor facility in the works right now that's gonna have uh, an indoor turf facility inside of it, and it's going to have a weight room. We've got new locker rooms. Uh, man, I, I can just tell you, uh, we, I talked with a Jumbotron people the other day. We're going to put a big Jumbotron in. The city's looking at doing that uh, down at the stadium. Uh, this stuff may be a, a three, four-year, five-year project of getting everything built, but the winning is going to happen. We're going, we're, we're here to compete. And, uh, you know, it's like I tell our guys, we break it down every day, loud and proud on state champions, because you got to say it and you got to believe it to get there. And uh, this program, that's our ultimate goal. And we're going to find a way to get there. 4A, 2A, it doesn't matter. 11 play at one time. And uh, that's what we got to do is put our best 11 on the field. And, you know, this place has got really good talent. And uh, like I said, uh, I, don't be shocked when, when good things start happening as the year goes on. We've got really good kids and uh, I'm excited to be here, you know, and, uh, you know, I, again, we got a really good coaching staff. I've been fortunate to pull some guys in throughout the state. Uh, got, you know, about four guys that were head coaches at one time on the, on the staff now. And, you know, we've been fortunate to get them in here. And, uh, you know, we hired Jay Todd as our defensive coordinator, who I think is a tremendous man on top of just being a good football coach. He's with several guys. He's been with some guys that have coached with me over the years. So he understands what I want. So, you know, it's, this program has put some youth back in me, and uh, oh, yeah. that's, that's kind of that's kind of what I've needed. Uh, you know, I'm 52, and I retired to come out of retirement to come back, and I'm just excited to be back in the state of Alabama coaching great high school football and uh, just looking forward to Friday nights. And before I send it over back to my partner, Andrew, I just want to tell you how excited we are to cover Orange Beach this season. I think Orange Beach will probably be – one of two only Baldwin County schools that we cover. Uh, we've had to do some reconfiguration for our coverage area, but we made sure to include Orange Beach in that. We can't wait to cover you. But you mentioned something. You're an 80s guy. So what is your what is your favorite song from the 80s? Let us I don't know, man. I got so many. I you know I, I, I And the crazy thing is that kids and all say I don't know the words. I get out there to sing, <laughs> and, and, and they say I don't know the words. I just tell them that I'm trying to – trying to test them to find out if they know the words. But uh, my wife will say the same thing. But, you know, you hear my voice. I ain't got no voice either, man. But I <laughs> on a football field, it sounds great. I, I just enjoy it. But, yeah, we pump music in. And, uh, you know, like I said, we have a lot of fun with what we do. And it's about learning. It's about getting better every day. It's about training. And uh, we get that done. We got a great weight, weight staff down here. And, you know, we're, we're working our kids every day. We're talking right now about adding a new system in our weight room on training that'll be able to monitor like how much exertion they got and everything else. Man, they didn't have that kind of stuff when I went through, but now, you know, they're, they're, they're watching it every way and they're going to train them better every day. So that's what it's all about. And uh, Bubba Butts, and if you don't know him, you will, and you play Jackson. Uh, he asked you not to run it up too bad when you play Jackson this year. <laughs> well, Cody Flournoy, the head coach at Jackson, was a uh, – a coach of mine at Phoenix City. Uh, he was on the staff there uh, for several years. So I know Cody's a good football coach, and uh, they, they've got uh, uh, they got great players there. We're going to have to really play well. But, uh, you know, I just – I tell people always to watch out, man. Don't ever not think about us. And, you know, I, I really I really like what we're doing. And, uh, you know, again, I, you don't know what the outcomes are going to be, but I can tell you this. I've never went into a game I didn't think I was going to win. So – Nothing's going to change down here, and we're going to give it a shot every night. And, you know, like I said, it's uh, what better place to live than right here and 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 play football. So, you know, we, we, we're looking at doing some seven-on-sevens down here in the future and bringing some teams out of state, and you guys might be involved in some, some of that stuff with some of these oh, yeah. 
coming in. So you have to stay in touch on that. We're looking at doing that maybe next year. Yes, yeah, sir. There's no doubt about that. But I just want to – you mentioned it earlier about, you know, obviously the city of Orange Beach helping. So you got to be lucky, I guess. First year there, they transferred to a city school. How has that transition been from being a county school to now a city school? Well, you know, I'm not going to lie. It's been it's been tough in some areas. Just anytime you've got transition, there's there's toughness to it. There's yeah. some there's some bumps in the road. But, uh, you know, everybody stayed the course. Our mayor uh, is just unbelievable here. Uh, ever since the first day I met him, he's all about this city. He's all about this high school. He's all about this program. And then the administration we've hired uh, has all been there and done that. And uh, everybody is, is is really well, uh, I guess, read and, and ready to take this on. And, and you know, we, we, we always got this little hiccup maybe, you know, whenever you move uh, to a new place, you think it's going to be great and you have a hiccup. You're always going to have those. But I think the people we have in charge and the things we have, we can get through those things. And like I said, it's all been minor, but, uh, you know, uh, everything's straight ahead. Uh, and uh, the opening of school is going to be great. But uh, we want to start everything off for the school system and this athletic year in football and, you know, hopefully get us started off in the right direction with some big wins, especially over Pensacola week one. Uh, that would be big for us if we were able to come in and, and get a start off to the to the season with a week one win. We wanted to play a really athletic team, and I was able to find Pensacola late. Uh, they were looking for a game. We, we needed a game, and uh, they've got some speed and some really talented uh, kids over that way. And I wanted us to see that before we play Jackson because uh, I know Jackson's going to have some really talented guys and some guys that can run. So, you know, we were able to achieve that, and we got an open week following that, so that will give us a little bit of time to prepare and uh, get the miscues or anything we need to get right ready for that first game against Jackson. And I will say this. Uh, I won't say it yet, but there is some special news coming from us about your game of Pensacola. So stay tuned for that one. But Boba Butts, like I said before, if you don't know him, you're, trust me, you're going to know him. He <laughs> said they need a police escort from the toll bridge in this Labor Day weekend. <laughs> I got you. I understand. But, uh, you know, what? they probably get anything they want down here. I found out. I, I, I tell you this on police escorts, talking about the city and the commitment. I've never went to a seven on seven and the police escorted you there and got you there. And I thought, man, this is not a Friday night, but uh, they do things right down here. No matter if it's a seven on seven game or, a, or, or what it is, everybody gets excited about it. So, you know, uh, I'm just proud to be a part of this new thing. And, you know, we're, we're, we're going to, we're, we're going to do it right. That's all I can say. And, you know, this, this thing's going to win and uh, we're going to, we're going to do it the right way. And, you know, uh, it's it's exciting to be a part of the development and the building of what's going on around here. And, Coach, obviously, uh, before you came to Orange Beach, the only talk you ever heard down there on the shore was, oh, Gulf Shore is this, Gulf Shore is that. They got all these kids coming in. And then the news broke. Orange Beach hires Jamie Dubos. All of a sudden, it's quiet. And now you start hearing the rumors of, oh, Orange Beach, Orange Beach. How has that community been like, you know, for obviously all the Gulf Shores talk, but how has the community been like since you've been there that you've realized? Well, they've been very uh, receptive and uh, very nice. I mean, everybody down here is really great and polite. Uh, look, I had a guy down here uh, that was here for a long time, a uh, former coach. He doesn't coach with us or anything, but he lives down here. He said, Coach, I want to tell you one thing. If you have a bad day at practice, uh, leave the field, drive down the road about a mile, look right or left and you'll remember why you're here and, and you'll feel better. And I can tell you for every bad day, you can drive off this campus and you start going, Hey, you know, this is a great place to be and it's a great place to live, but the people are extremely nice. And, you know, it's uh it's, it's a good for me because it's good for family. Uh, I've got four sons. Uh, so they visit all during the summer. Now they're coming in just uh, once every now and then. And, you know, I've got one son playing college baseball. I had two sons play college football. My other son's an engineer. He's the one to make all the money now, but he's he's going <laughs> he's going to Auburn to be an engineer. And uh, so I'm 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 blessed with a great wife that's very supportive, and and she's a real reason too of coming back. Uh, when I left the state of Alabama, uh, I took that lounge job without her side by side, knowingly with me, and she didn't get her retirement. So. Uh, 
you know, getting back over here and fulfilling her dream of being retired, maybe one down, one day down the road in a few years would be really good. And then, you know, after my dad passed, everybody knows uh, back in March, uh, it was very important for me to get back close to family and my mom. And, you know, my mom's with me this weekend down here. She stays a lot. And uh, so it, it's, it's just been wonderful. It's been great living here. Number one, the people, but it's also been great to be close to family and family to be here. And uh, that that's what's been great about it. So, Coach, before we get into your schedule, you you've been saying it all show, and so and I'm really under the impression that the community the community support in Orange Beach is something that you probably haven't really seen before at that extent. So, how has the community support been since your arrival, and how do you look to rally the community support for the upcoming football season? Well, you know, every community when you're new, they're going to get behind you. Uh, they all do, but. Uh, this community is probably a little different. Uh, they, they, I can see the hunger by some people. When I say hunger, they may not be running around cheering and doing all this kind of stuff, but you know, they, they want to win. They want to win in program and, uh, they want, they want the best for their children. They want the best for the, uh, students that are at this school. And, uh, you know, I, I'm on, I'm gonna mention just the people in the community, not the parents, but people in the community that, uh, don't even have kids playing that, that, that's what's been remarkable to me is, to see people walk up to me and, and introduce themselves and talk to me and, uh, you know, just say, Hey, whatever we can do to help coach, whatever we can do, let us know. And, and that's why it's been impressive to me is, is kind of the outside forces, uh, that don't really have a, a dog in the fight, so to speak. They, they just, they're, they're going to be a part of it. And, you know, our kids have, we, we went out and we, we did some cleaning up one day, and picking up some blocks from uh, uh, some guys that was doing some work. And I thought it was interesting that uh, the two guys we helped out said, hey, I ain't never bought a, a ticket to watch a football game, but I'm going to buy some this year. You know, and that's what we're trying to do is just put back into the community and show that uh, we're here for them and, and we're their team. And, you know, we're going to represent this community, just as the mayor told me when we, we talked uh, a long time ago is, you know, he just wants he wants these guys to, to represent what this community is all about, hard work and doing the right things. And uh, that's what we're going to do each and every time we try to go on the field and represent Orange Beach. And so, Coach, I guess again, we're ready to uh, break down your schedule. If Andrew has it ready to pull up, I think I, I took it from him. But we're going to discuss your schedule. Like you said, uh, Orange Beach is – making a jump from 2A to 4A, I believe. And now there are some uh, good programs in 4A and in your region that you will have to face this year. We are, we've already mentioned Jackson and uh, Escambia County, T.R. Miller, traditional powerhouse on the 4A scene. Um, I'm not sure if Andrew has it uh, pulled up yet, but it's, it's, uh, there a, it's it is a little right blurry. There. It's a little blurry. So, so we, you have Pensacola, then you have an open, and then you host Jackson, you go to Satsuma, and then you come home to host T.R. Miller. That part of the schedule right there, you go through Jack, you go through Pensacola, Jackson, Satsuma, T.R. Miller. Just talk about this part of the schedule right here. Well, you know, T.R. Miller, I'll start there. It's T.R. Miller, their traditional power. Uh, I got the opportunity to play for Jamie Riggs when he was at Op for the couple of years he was there. Uh, and that's where I went to school. So Coach Riggs, I know what he accomplished there at T.R. Miller, and it's still T.R. Miller. It's a great place. Uh, football rich talent place and uh, a lot of tradition uh, Satsuma you know I know they've had a coaching change I know uh, uh, Rodney that took the job Rodney I knew him back when he was at Charles Henderson uh, I had a coach that was there for a while that I knew and I, I got to know him I knew him when we was with Ed Rigby and I was over at Phoenix City I got to know him he's gonna do an outstanding job there and, and I expect them to be a good team you know Jackson Listen, Jackson is Jackson. They've been a 5A program that was very strong, very good. They got Danny Powell back with them, from my understanding, helping them out. Uh, he's going to do an exceptional job, and he's well-known. Uh, so they're, they're a great program. Pensacola's been down, but they're very athletic with a new coach. Uh, I know the new coach has got uh, a lot of energy and a lot of, a lot of the good things happening over there. He's saying the right things. Uh, so they're going to be excited. To play them week one is going to be tough. Because everybody's 0 and 0 with the aspirations of winning a state championship, so you get everybody's best shot right there. And uh, you know, then we're going to have to run through that gauntlet to get to where we got to get to. Uh, but like you said, we didn't even touch on the second half, and I know you're probably going to get to it. But 
you know, you got St. Michael's on there, and 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 they got an exceptional football team. I, we've ran into them at a couple of seven on sevens this year. Uh, you got Bayside on there, you know, and and the list can go on. And uh, you know that there's some there's some really talented teams that we've got to face and get through this year uh, to have a chance to win it. But uh, you know, I've been in these ball games. It's just different environments I got to go to, uh, different places, and. Uh, you know, but we've got a process, and our process is going to handle it. And I, I expect our kids to play hard. You know, that's all we can do. I tell our kids each and every week, we don't go to win a state championship. We don't go to do it. We just go to play and don't beat ourselves. And that's one of the biggest things about a program I do. We talk about state championships, I guess, when I talk to the community. But when we're inside these closed doors, you know, state championships are going to happen. If they happen, they happen. But, guys, I'll go ahead and tell you, you got to have a lot of luck along the way. You got to have a lot of things go your way to get there usually. So, you know, we're going to take it week by week. That's the one way thing we're going to do on the schedule. You you started knocking off names there and we talked about them. Right now, we're worried about Orange Beach. That's what I tell our guys all the time. We have not even thought about Pensacola, TR Miller, any of those guys. Jackson, we 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 haven't even posted anything, looked at anything. We are worried about Orange Beach and we're worried about our offense, our defense our special teams. We're worried about getting better every day. We want to be that 1% better every day we walk off that field. And if we can do that, then we got a shot. But uh, I expect us to be a lot better football team when we hit T.R. Miller than we are when we hit Pensacola. So that's what I preach to our guys every day is just getting that 1% better and, and, and trying to climb that ladder. You know, when you climb a ladder, you don't jump to the top. You got to take it one step at a time. And that's what I tell them every day. So next week when we get back on the turf, we'll get back on the field, it's going to be one step every day trying to climb that ladder. And, Coach, uh, we had Coach Tyson on our show a few days ago, and we got to talk to him, see his energy, hear his energy. We got to talk to a couple of players that he had. And me and him talk every day just because I work in Pensacola a lot. He's around the area, so me and him try to catch up. Yeah, he's an energetic guy now. He texted me uh, last night. And said you need to refer the opening game against Orange Beach as a battle of the Op Boys, and <laughs> I, I totally forgot. I forgot that you went to Op and he went to Op, but having that right there, he says it's been a, a lot of smack talk to him from a lot of the Op community, saying you left us. We're going to support Coach Dubo, show up in some Orange Beach gear. Just meeting him and talking to him, uh, I guess really, you know, just what do you think that's going to mean to Pensacola's program? Just seeing what kind of people uh, or what kind of person he is. Well, you know, I think he'll bring a lot of energy there. You hit the thing first. I, I don't know who was there before him, but it's hard to bring the energy he has every day. Uh, and that's the first thing you got to do. And I think he's doing the right things. He cares about people. You know, that, that when I started winning as a head coach was when I stopped worrying about X's and O's and I start worrying about people, you know, and he's trying to develop the person. And I think that that'll win for you in the end. You know, the wins may not come early. They may. Uh, you never know. But I think if he'll stay solid, they'll keep giving him a chance. I think he's going to do a good a good job. He's been he's been at places that they know how to do it and they know what to do. So you know you got to give him a little time and uh, you know. But hey, with the players he's got, you know, you get it going in the right direction, things could turn out around very fast. And coach, uh, before I move on, I do have something special to say. So obviously, I told you earlier there is something special about that game to us. And that's because week one, South Alabama Sports is traveling to Pensacola for Orange Beach at Pensacola for the South Alabama Sports Game of the Week for week one. So we will be there, have an exclusive coverage for that one. And then, I mean, I think people might get tired of seeing Orange Beach because Orange Beach and Jackson, that's another one that is on our list potentially. So it's going to be an exciting time. I know around uh, your program, Pensacola's program, and just seeing that. So we're excited to travel, but – I do have a question for you. So somebody, oh, it's my brother. He wants to know if he can expect special teams to be strong with Matt Bryant living in Orange Beach. Yeah, you know, his son's a kicker for us. And uh, he, he does an exceptional job. But, heck, his son can play inside linebacker and play fullback and running back. I mean, he's a tough kid, but he, he also kicks. But we've got some really good kickers on our team, you know, uh, and, and I'm excited about it. Uh, and the crazy thing is, is our kickers are like 10th graders and below. Uh, so we're going to have them for years to come, and uh, they're doing a great job. So, you know, I, I yeah, I, our kicking game is going to be strong. Uh, you know, Matt is, is helping with our 10U team, I think. He's one of the coaches 
that is uh, going to be happening with that, I believe. So he's involved in our program, and uh, we're glad to have him down here. And, you know, he's a great role model, and he can always help us in every way possible. But, you know, we're, we're, we're excited because he's got – He's got several boys that play down here also, and they're all pretty good darn football players, I can tell you that. And what do you think, before I uh, throw it back to Michael, what do you think that does? Obviously, you have Phillip Rivers at Orange – or at sorry, at St. Michael's. Then you have Matt Brown with you. What do you think it means to the kids in the community seeing these NFL players come back and start giving back and trying to develop these younger guys? Well, you know, it just – it speaks volumes for the character they have, you know, number one, you know, not to be – selfish and not to just be you know guys like that don't have to help at all you know let's just be straight up and honest about it you know that they probably can sit at home or do whatever they want to do but you know they're willing to get out and help and they're willing to get out and and not just help but help in the community to make it better you know both of them do great things in every community and you know they're involved in a lot of things and uh you know that that just speaks volumes to the character of the nfl and a lot of the players that are in the nfl you know sometimes like I said, you see coaches on the sideline or players on the field, and, and that's the only time you ever see them. But you never really get to see them out of that element to see what kind of people they are. And they're really great people, uh, people that care and people that want to help them make a difference in other people's lives. And I do have one more question again from uh, Mr. Bubba on here. He wants to know if you've met Jeff Silvers yet down there at the beach. Actually, uh, yes. Uh, and, and I believe his uh, son – uh, does some training of quarterbacks down at the uh, sportsplex. So he's been he that thing. So uh, absolutely, uh, very important people and people that's done a lot in this community also is the Silvers. And let's move to the second half. I'll throw it back to Michael to break down the second half of the schedule. Well, Coach, I mean, you already said it. Orange Beach right now is worrying about Orange Beach, but, you know, we are in talking season so if we're going to break it down to just a little bit further here. Uh, after T.R. Miller, you come home for homecoming is McIntosh. Then you're on the road at St. Michael's, then at Bayside. Then you host Wilcox Central at Scambia County, and then you end the season at Fruitdale. Coach, the, the, the teams that stand out right there, St. Michael's, Bayside, uh, and the rest of them as well. Some of those pro uh, programs have new coaches, especially at, at Scambia County with Coach Vincent Harris taking over at the ham. So, like you said, by the time you get to T.R. Miller, you know, you want your team to already, you know, be one of the best teams in, in this area, in this region. So in the second half of the season, what do you want to see from your team going forward? Well, in the first year, continued growth. You know, the growth is not going to stop in this first year. You know, we're going to continue to get better. As I said, I want, want to be better in T.R. Miller than you are Pensacola. Well, of course, once we get down to the end, we want to be better than we were even at the T.R. Miller game. So we want to just continue to grow and get stronger as this year goes. And, you know, I expect that, you know, the, the key thing is to stay away from that old injury bug uh, at this level, I know, uh, because depth will play into it. But that's something we're trying to work on now and we're going to continue to work on is our depth. Uh, by the time we get in that second half of the year, I hope our depth has really gotten better. And when I say depth, I hope those young kids, those backup kids now, are starting to develop playing time in the special teams or maybe getting reps on a Friday night to give guys a rest to help us get to that fourth quarter and to get down to week 10 to give, to be stronger as we enter the playoffs. So, you know, that that that's where we're at with that. I think that uh, St. Michael's and Bayside, that back-to-back -back game on the road, I believe it is, that's going to be a tough little hit right there. we got to really accept that challenge. That's going to be the biggest challenge I see right now, in my opinion, in the second half. Two well-coached teams, two teams that have got good players but good communities, and uh, they're really going to have a good plan. So, you know, I think that that stretch of just two games right there, I think that's going to be a key point in our second half and the development and where we're going to finish and how we're going to go in this season. Yes, sir, I agree. I was uh, I was actually coaching the base out last year, got to be around Coach Laz and those guys. And I got to see it firsthand of uh, what people always talk, you know, talked about. When I was at T.R. Miller, it's always we got to play Bayside, man. No matter if we have guys that are six seven, run a four two, Bayside's going to wind up hitching the mouth and possibly beat you. And that's yep. the way they do it. It's all fundamentally sound. And I mean, there's a lot of good games for Orange Beach in the schedule, and obviously a lot of chances for y'all to do successful things. And we're just like, we're excited to be a part of it. We're excited to see, you know, obviously you coached back down at Alabama, and obviously get to see, you know, what you put on the field. 
and see, you know, how successful it's going to be and just where you start and how you finish. But as we wrap up, what is one message that you have to your Orange Beach community about this football season coming up? Well, just to stay faithful and stay true to it and continue to support. Uh, I can promise you one thing. These guys are going to play hard. Uh, they're going to they're gonna represent this community well. And uh, all I can say is good things are going to keep coming year in and year out. Uh, this is not a one-year deal. And I think uh, the strength of this program is even going to get better each and every year. I think we're looking good to have a good year this year. But, you know, this is going to be an every-year thing. This is not a one-year deal. It's not a, a one-hit wonder. This thing's going to be a growth. Uh, we've got a lot of people committed to this thing. And, uh, you know, we just want to keep the commitment up. We want to keep the excitement going. And my biggest thing is, you know, don't worry about the coach. Don't worry about who's coaching. I've always told people, if you don't like the coach, you don't like the coaches, that's great. But go support these kids. And I'm talking, I guess, to anybody now, not just Orange Beach. But you got kids right now with a lot of things going on in this world that they can do a lot of things. And they're willing to give up and go work hard and get on a field and practice and go represent your community. So go support the youth and what they're doing and what they're trying to do that's in a positive manner for a community. And uh, just support them in a good way, man, because I promise you, Every kid that hits a field on Friday night wants to win. They ain't going out there to lose. They going out there to win. So support them and uh, support them win or lose, man, and uh, let them know you're, you're, you're happy and thankful that they're giving up the times that they could be doing other things because I'm happy to be at a place that there's a lot of things going on, and we got 72 that's willing to go to work every day during the summer, and that makes me excited, and uh, that makes me excited to what's going to happen here in the future. Well, Coach, we are so excited. Like I said, Orange Beach is one of uh, one of our only schools in Baldwin County that we're going to cover this year, and we are so excited. You heard Andrew say um, South Alabama sports will be at the Pensacola Orange Beach game, and we can't wait for that time to come. Coach, thank you for joining us tonight. And I got to get you some hats and shirts or something, man. We need to pull you on now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> hey, hey, I'll I tell you. So I, I, I talked to Coach Tyson, and he kind of gave me the cold shoulder today. He was like, man, I don't have any gear. I said, well, time to go to Orange Beach. You don't have what I need. We got gear, baby. We'll put it on you. Come on down. And, hey, coming to a game at Orange Beach and doing it will be the game to come to because you ain't going to get no finer eating than you do when you come right here to Orange Beach. Hey, I'll tell you, I am. Every time I go to Orange Beach, it's always Big Mike's. That's the go-to. I I can't make up my mind when I pull out the front of the school where I'm doing when I go home. So, I mean, there's just too many options down here. It's always, in my opinion, it's like, okay, do I want to go here or is traffic too bad to go any further? So it's, that's always the opinion, always the option. Well, man, we, we're just glad to have y'all support us. And uh, let me say this, thank you for what you do for the youth and promoting them. And, and man, I appreciate it greatly. And anything we can do here at Orange Beach to help you and your program, let us do it and we'd be happy to. Yes, sir. Because, Dubos, when I'm down in the area, I'll have to swing by and get some footage and pictures for you. And we we'll have that. you on again. We'll have something special for you. Always welcome. And everybody that's on right now, y'all stay tuned. Me and Michael are going to preview our preseason coaches of the year and also our teams of the year. So don't go anywhere. We'll be back in 30 seconds. And we are, I need to change this. And we are <laughs> back here on Southern Sports. Me and Michael, we have been going back and forth all day long about preseason picks for Coach of the Year. Uh, we have Player of the Year picks coming soon as well. And also who we think are the teams that will make that journey to state this year. But, Michael, let's start with you. Obviously, uh, you have some coaches that you think will be uh, the Coach of the Year for this upcoming year. So let's put yours on here and let's go through these and tell me uh, what you think. You know, um, I'm going to say this. I am very, I, it, it, it was difficult. It was difficult. Uh, some of these coaches, 
I, I know they're capable of. I know they can take their teams to the state championship. And also, some of these coaches – are you going to put them on the big screen too? Oh, some, some of these coaches have, you know, the ability of turning a program all the way around. For example, we're going to start right here. Like I said, this is just preseason. These are my coaches that I know can out the gate, can do something special. You know, I, you know, I, I, I'm a very biased person. You know, I could easily put uh, a lot of, of my favorite coaches on the list, but I decided to go somewhat the professional route with this. Like I said, this is preseason. Anything can change, and it probably will change. My 1A coach of the year, I'm going down to Leroy with Coach Jason Massey. What he has done at Leroy is nothing short of remarkable. They're in 1A powerhouse uh, year in, year out. Uh, 2A, Stacey Luker. The name says it all. Clark County was at the state championship last year. I'm pretty sure they can make a repeat at that stage. I, you know, I, I, I've seen Clark County from my time at TR Miller when we used to play them. A great team, a great program, a great area to be in over there in Grove Hill. My 3A coach of the year, you know, I, I went up the street on Championship Highway as Councilman Dave, David, Jen, David Jennings say, and I went to Doug Vickery at Flomerton. Flomerton is a great program. Coach Vickery is a great coach. He can do great things in 3A, uh, and, and I think they can compete for a championship in 4A. I went with Coach Vincent Harris. What? Michael didn't go with T.R. Miller? No, I went with Coach Vincent Harris because I know that he can turn that program around in year one. It might not. It might be a playoff berth. It might be more than five wins. But I think Coach Harris will be the 4A Coach of the Year, in my opinion, based off the merit of he can turn the program around. For my 5A Coach of the Year, I went with Patrick Browning. You know, he's coming off that state championship at Pike Road. He's going. He's at Greenville now. I'm pretty sure he's going to turn that program into something special. Uh, don't be, look out for Greenville this year in 5A. And 6 and one was Jeff Kelly and Sarah Lamb. Sarah Lamb will be one of the few schools, if not the only school we cover in Mulberry County because of, uh, you know, there's another phenomenal great group down there that that's more in depth with it than we are, and we don't have the access to it like they do. They do a phenomenal job over there. Uh, but you know, Jeff Kelly, Sarah Land, hey, it speaks for itself. And in 7A, I flipped the switch on this one. I didn't know where to go. There are a lot of competitors in 7A. Could have went with Opelika. I could have went with Hewitt Trustful, but I went with Ben Blackman at Enterprise. Ben Blackman's coming from Spanish Ford. He's going to Enterprise. Enterprise was a phenomenal team last year. They made some upsets. They got to the second round of the 7A playoffs. Could this be the year that the Wildcats win a state championship? Those are my preseason, preseason coach of the year. I'm sorry, Bubba. You know, I'm just saying. But look, Jackson could be there. Jackson could be there. This is just my preseason coach of the year. All right, well, Bubba, I'm sorry we got Mike out of the way for you. Uh, we won't let him talk the rest of the night. But also, I had to get my preseason coach of the year picks. Obviously, uh, I'm, I'm kind of going the same line as Michael here. I've kind of based mine off of who I think will have the most success, but also who I think will be able to turn their program around and do some great things. Now, I'm going to do mine a little different. These are my preseason picks, but also I'm going to give you the ones that I think could be the sleeper and also win it. But first, I got Coach Massey at Leroy. Uh, he's an outstanding coach, outstanding person. I got to talk to him a few weeks ago, and I got to hear about, you know, his vision for the program and what he thinks this team is going to be, and I think that he'll be a high contender for 1A Coach of the Year. Obviously, Coach Luke at Clark County, what he did last year to win a state championship, he's a, he's a Hall of Famer. And at Clark County, he has done amazing things. Uh, his son, Drew Luker, is probably going to be a future Hall of Famer, I think, as he gets older and gets uh, obviously some more years under his belt. But 3A Coach of the Year, same thing with as Michael leaning towards Doug Vickery. Uh, what he's done at Flemington, I feel like he has always been consistent, but I think this year is going to be special. I think this year is the year that he gets over that hump and he wins it. And I just think, you know, what the team he has and the guys we got to meet the other night, it was a special group. 4A Coach of the Year. Again, Bubba, I'm sorry. But I got to go with Trent Taylor at Andalusia. Uh, Trent Taylor has been one of those coaches I've always loved. Ever since he's came from Strong to Andalusia back home, he's one of the coaches I've loved watching, uh, especially what he's been able to do with the teams and talent he's had. And this year, he has one of the most talented groups I think Andalusia's had in the past 10 years. And if he doesn't win 
Coach of the year, I don't know. But I will say if he doesn't win it, it's going to be between Jamie Dubose and Coach Flo at Jackson. And those are the three teams, obviously, that I think, I'll go ahead and say it, those three teams are the ones I think would be able to compete in the playoffs. And I think those three teams are going to be able to meet. So we'll see what happens there. But 5A, I got to go with my guy, Coach Brownie at Greenville. Uh, he's coming on the show next week. But what he did at Pike Rose speaks for itself. And the talent he has at Greenville, the pieces he's put together with the coaching staff at Greenville, I mean, it, 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 again, it speaks for itself. What, he, uh, what I think he's going to be able to do with that program to get it back to where it should be at Greenville is going to be something to watch. I need to take your name off. But it's, good. it's going to be something fun to watch at Greenville this year for sure. And, again, you know, you'll get to see more of him next week. And then 6A, I had to go a different route than Michael. I had to go with Chase Smith at Spanish Fort. I love Chase Smith. Bubba, come on, man. But I love Chase Smith and what he's done at Orange Beach. I love what he's doing at Spanish Ford. I've been able to see a couple of practices that he's had and just the excitement around Spanish Ford when he came back. And it's going to be just a special year for Spanish Ford. And I think give him two to three years, Spanish Ford is going to be back to where it should be. And there's no doubt in my mind. I think this year he does a, he has something special building, and I think he will win potentially coach of the year this year. And 7A, Ben Blavin. I mean, what a guy, a tremendous coach, but more importantly, he is a more tremendous person. And he is a genuine a genuine guy. If you ever get to meet him, I respect the man more than probably any coach I've ever met. He's just really genuine. He cares about the game, cares about the players. And I'm excited to see what he does in the enterprise, like Michael said. And Florida Coach of the Year. Michael had on his. I forgot to put it up there, but Florida Coach of the Year. I got to go with Coach Tyson, not because he's in our area and we've talked to him, but I genuinely believe what he's going to do at Pensacola this year, it's going to be it's going to be special. And I'm excited to see what he's about to do, the passion, the energy he has. And we'll be giving you an exclusive look next week at Pensacola High School football as well. But, uh, well, we, we just lost a follower. But was leaving. <laughs> hey, Wendell, you know. see, see, Wendell, if you would have been on here, I know, <laughs> I, I know, but see, you just, you just made us lose a viewer. Sorry, you know, Bubba. Like I, like I said, the sooner you get on, Bubba, the better it's going to be for you. It's going to be on the Jackson right. hate train. That's right. That's right. You know, this is and, – and this is – don't take me serious. We, we're having fun. Andrew's having fun. I'm having fun. And, and and that's the part of these preseason picks. You know, we, we're we just we're just two guys having fun, you know. Worst band in the States, Bubba Butts. He's a bandwagon. <laughs> I saw him in the Sarah Lane shirt on the 7 on 7. You know, we're just having fun. You know, we hope, I hope I have to eat some crow down the road because I made a mistake. And that's the best part of the job, being wrong and having fun about, you know, I messed up. But, you know, these are some great coaches. I will say this, that 4A one for me was very difficult. You know, I could have went with my good, I could have went with my good guy at T.R. Miller, Coach Brent Hubbard, because that is my alma mater. And I will pick T.R. to win anything. But you know that the 4A Region One, I believe that is, I think believe that is Region One. That is going to be a heavyweight, tough region. Jackson, we talked to Orange Beach, T.R. Miller, St. Michael's. Oh, at Escambia County, you know that region is going to be tough. And I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be surprised if one of those teams from 4A Region One competes for a state championship for 7A, Central Phoenix City, Opelika. Auburn, uh, Keith, uh, Auburn High School, Keith Edwards there. Those are those. Are, that's another heavyweight area right there in 7A. One of those teams can compete for a state championship. The 1A, 2A, all those Linden, Sweetwater. Oh, my goodness, that area over there in West Alabama. It's going to be a very heavyweight. I mean, we have a lot of heavyweights that we're covering, and that's the fun part of this group. We're going to have fun. We're not going to be so serious all the time, but when we are serious, we're still going to have fun. And I can't wait for the season to start. Michael, uh, Bubba said he's going to have our pictures up at the gate so he can't get in. But Bubba, joke's on you. If we want to see Jackson, we got a chance to go to Orange Beach to watch y'all. And just because of that, I'm telling Coach Dubo, I'm going to give y'all an escort. Y'all got to fight the traffic over the bridge for Labor Day. But, again, we're excited. Uh, we're excited of what's going to be in store uh, with Southern Sports and also during football season and after. But it's just going to be a, a great time with Michael. I want to go through this. Who are some teams you think 3A through, or you can go 1A through 7A, 
that you think will be making the run to state this year? Well, you know, I I, I am still in the phase of, of, of learning so much about these great teams that we're going to cover. Uh, obviously, we're not covering all of South Alabama because we're just not in the capacity to do so. Um, you know, I can only, you know, the reason I am covering certain teams because, you know, I grew up around those teams and I know them historically and I keep up with them and I know people that uh, are fans and supporters of that certain school. Um, I want to revisit this question for 1A and 2A later on uh, when the close when the season starts and I have more of my information and facts straight uh, for 3A. You know, I, I'm going to say this. Um, don't be surprised if you see the Hillcrest Evergreen Jaguars, uh, Jaguars competing for a state championship on 3A. Hillcrest has always had speed. They've always had talent. They've always had a great coach there. And it's just one step away from winning another state championship for 4A. I've already said it. 4A, the area that we cover, that's going to be the, the SEC West. It's a tough region, tough team, great coaches. Um, so I, I don't feel great picking one right there because though, any of those teams can, you know, surprise us all. Uh, for 5A, I'm going to go with Greenville in 5A uh, because of Coach Patrick Browning and the staff he's bringing and the way he can turn a program around and take a team back uh, to the state championship. In 6A, I'm, I, I'm, I'm really leaning seven. I'm really in Sarah Land right there. Uh, Spanish Sport as well. Those two teams are, are, are two of my teams to watch right there. Um, for, for 7A, um, Wow, I, I just don't know. I mean, Opelika is joining 7A now, Auburn High School, Central Phoenix, um, Enterprise. But I'm going to go, you know, I was with them last year, and I want to go with them this year. I'm going to say Auburn High School. You know, they're returning. Um, they've lost some, but they're returning some great players, some great starters. Uh, one of the best, One of the best coaching staffs in 7A. Uh, don't be surprised if Auburn High makes some noise this year. Don't be surprised if Central Phoenix City makes noise this year. And don't be surprised if uh, Opelika or Enterprise makes noise as well. I'm going to bring up one. I'm not going to say 2A because I just don't know if 2A is for sure. But I will say Leroy Sweetwater will be the ones walking away to say champions in 1A. Just what Coach Matthews is doing at Leroy, just talking to him. I think Leroy gets over that hump. But obviously, Sweetwater is a safe pick. That's what everybody always picks. Sweetwater finds a way to uh, to do the right things. 3A, I'm going to go with a shocker here. I'm not saying they're going to win state. I'm not going to pick that for 3A. But I think W.S. Neal watched them this year as he found return home. The hires he has made, the players that I have seen transfer in, W.S. Neal is a sleeper in that region. And I'm just going to say that. I'm going to say watch it and see. They it's going to be – it's going to be, obviously, Neil, I think Mobile Christian being back in 3A is obviously a threat. But I think just watch WS Neil, watch what they do. I strongly believe that they do have a chance to make some noise in that region. And 4A, like Michael said, this is, it's impossible to pick, I think, right now. But I will say it's going to come down to two teams. And it's going to be Jackson and T.R. Miller. Now you have Orange Beach. Obviously, Coach Juba is hard. It's hard to pick right now. But I think Orange Beach is that. It's, I think they're the same right now as T.R. Miller until I see them play with Coach Dubos. I think those two right there are neck and neck. But it's going to come down to Jackson and one other team. Jackson is too strong, too powerful. I think what Coach Flo is doing, it's going to be hard to beat them. And when they go to the playoffs, I strongly believe that it's going to be them and Andalusia head-to-head. Whoever wins that game will go to state. In my opinion, it's going to be between Jackson and Andalusia in that region for a state championship. 5A, like you said, Coach Brownie and Greenville. I mean, it's hard not to, it's not it's hard not to pick him. What he did at Pike Road and what he's doing at Greenville with the players he has, the coaching staff. I got some videos of Greenville the other day, and man, they look good. They look really good. The culture he's trying to build there. It's the conversations me and him have had the past few days. It's gonna be it's gonna be really fun to watch, and I'm excited we get to cover them, get to see them play. And it's an exciting time if you're a Greenville Tiger. Six A. I mean, I really. I mean, Michael's saying Sarah Land. Sarah Land is everybody's favorite right now just because of the transfer. They have a quarterback. But I'm still going to stay with Chase Smith. And I told uh, Shantae 
this other day from Spanish Fort, I'm going to ride the wagon until the wheels fall off of Spanish Fort. Coach Smith is such a good coach. He's hard not to pull for. And it's going to be a fun time to watch their, or to watch Spanish Fort this year, what they're going to do. And they have a really tough schedule. So it's going to be interesting to see how they make it out in 7A. It's tough. It's tough because you obviously want to go with Ben Blackman. You obviously want to go with Coach Ethers, the two teams that we've been studying, you know, since we've been doing this. They're both in our region. But I got to go with Coach Blackman on this side, not to win state, but to make some noise in his region to make a push in the playoffs. And obviously I'm not going to pick it right now, but they are going to be the ones to watch in that region. It's going to be interesting to see how the culture has changed from last year to this year with Coach Blackman at the helm and what he does. But I say if you are playing Enterprise, watch out because that's going to be a surprise for everybody this year. It is going to be a wonderful season. And, Andrew, I think the people want to know, but before we go to that, let's not forget about our friends up there at Southside Gaston. Uh, let's not forget about our friends over there at Hewitt Trustful. Those will also be two great programs to keep an eye on and to make some noise in their uh, specific classification and region. But, Andrew, I really believe the people are really ready to know week one, game of the week for South Alabama sports. All right, so what we mentioned earlier, uh, we already have one location pick, and that is Pensacola hosting Orange Beach at home uh, or August 19th. Going to be a fun game there. It's going to be a really fun game to watch me between Coach Tyson and Coach Dubose, first-year coaches versus first-year coach. It's going to be interesting to see. And, Michael, you have your game of the week. You're going to be attending that day. The game of the week I will be attending will be held at the Crimson Bowl in Montgomery, Alabama. It'll be Auburn High School versus Hoover. Hoover is under a new coach. Auburn High School, under year two, was Keith Etheridge. Both programs are great programs. Hoover is this traditional powerhouse in the 6, 6 8, 7, 8 region classification. Uh, up there in the Birmingham area. Auburn High School is a newcomer to the scene, but they've been pretty great these past couple years. Uh, so that's another uh, great game of the week that we have chosen for week one about uh, some, you know, a new heavyweight and an old heavyweight uh, to be held in Montgomery at the Crimson Bowl. And our other game of the week, we're coming back to Championship Highway, the battle of Highway 31 between T.R. Miller and Hillcrest. I believe that game is at Hillcrest this year in Evergreen. Uh, we're going to have somebody there at the game. We're going to do our best to get a representative from South Alabama Sports at that game because Hillcrest and T.R. Miller, they have this great history, this great rivalry going on, and they're two, two teams that can do anything and can really be dominant this year. There are different classifications but it's still going to be a great game in good old Evergreen, Alabama. And Bubba, we are we are talking about game uh, week one game of the weeks. So don't week jump, one, don't... yeah, just week one. Bubba's over <laughs> here already trying to see. He's already, he's already campaigning. He's already campaigning. Look, we go. We still have nine more weeks to go. Trust me, we are going to Jackson. And week two, I'll go ahead and say it: Milton hosting Andalusia. Week two. That is already on our Game of the Week schedule. That's the only one we have set for right now for Week 2. But Milton hosting Andalusia, we will be at that game covering that. Milton has some high-power quarter, high power quarterback committed to Miami. And you have Andalusia, the running back, has so many offers. I know everybody's going to be having their eyeballs on that game to see how they match up. And it's going to be a fun time. Like we said before, we're going to be on the road this year. And we're going to be at so many schools giving out T-shirts, and it's going to be a really special time. We're going to have a tent set up, so we'll come out and say hello to us. We're going to have pregame access, halftime reports, and also postgame access with coaching interviews, player interviews. So y'all watch out for that. But we're excited to see you guys at the game. Like I said, come by, speak to us. You know, if you have anything you want to talk about, just please let us know there. Let us know how we're doing. But we're excited. It's going to be an exciting time to be involved. So y'all stay tuned to that. And – I, this will do it for us, guys. Like I said, we are on something special here. Can't wait to get going. Can't wait to get started. Talking season is slowly coming to an end. Football season is slowly approaching. That'll be all for me. I think that'll be all from Andrew. We're taking us a two-week hiatus. I will not be back on live until August, but it's great to be here at South Alabama Sports. Andrew, is there anything else? 
Y'all stay tuned for next week. We have Coach Browning from Greenville High School. He's going to be joining us next week. We finally set up a time with him. So y'all stay tuned for our page for that. And also, we are going to have another special guest Wednesday, Coach Jeff Kelly from Sarah Land. He is going to be joining our show. So stay tuned for that. It'll be me and Jeff, or me and Coach Kelly, excuse me, and me and Coach Browning Friday. So y'all stay tuned for that. And then again, you won't see Michael again until August. After our two interviews next week, you won't see me for a week <clears throat> as we prepare for the new content rolling out. And we'll be sharing that on our page as well about what we have planned. But until then, y'all stay tuned to our page. Y'all let us know how we're doing. Anything you have us to post, let us know. But until then, I am Andrew Etheridge. That is Michael Floyd. You're watching Southern Sports. We will see you next time.